Well, because of recent news, rotary powered cars just became a rich man's game. Welcome to Aaron's Eccentric Garage. This past week, rumors started going around that Mazda was actually going to increase the retail price of the 13B REW rotary engine. That's basically the same engine that's in my 1993 Mazda RX-7. Now, the news of a price increase should come as no surprise because everything's more expensive with this non-stop inflation. Prior to this rumor of a price increase, you were able to find a brand new 13B REW engine from Mazda for about five to $6,000, maybe even a little bit less if you're willing to shop around for a bit and be patient. To everyone's surprise, Bonsai Racing shared what the recommended or MSRP essentially is for a brand new 13B REW engine to a staggering $13,546.89. Now I know inflation's bad, but that's a 93% price increase for a 13B engine that developed 255 horsepower in 1993, and that was with two turbos slapped onto the side of it. Now for comparison and price, the closest equivalent you have when it comes to rotary would be a 100% billet engine from Billet Rotary at $16,500. What does this mean for rotary owners now? Well, the initial reaction from a lot of folks on social media is, well, maybe that uh, LS swap that people tease us about might not be a bad idea in the future. Oh, that's nasty. With an estimated swap cost about six to $9,000, depending on where you source your LS engine from, it's much more appealing and easier to tolerate than a $13,000 bill for a brand new 13B engine from Mazda. Even if you went and got a brand new LS3 crate engine from Summit Racing, you'd still only spend $6,500. And that engine produces over 430 horsepower out of the box. Now I know the LS engine is famously reliable for producing good horsepower, parts are accessible and pretty cheap all things considered, but to those of us who are very much a rotary purist, the mere idea of doing an LS swap like with an American V8 into a svelte Japanese icon kind of makes us a little nauseated. Now there is another swap that's becoming more and more popular, at least the idea of it, and that would be doing a Honda K series swap into the RX-7 and then adding a turbo as well. Not only are the K-series engines like a K20 or K24 engines readily available with a ton of aftermarket support, they also have a very high RPM range, ranging from about 8,000 to 8,600 RPM depending on the engine configuration. Meaning that for those of us with rotaries who like our high RPMs, can have a very similar experience as well. Now when it comes to weight, a fully dressed 13B REW engine weighs about 327 pounds. Now in contrast, to GM's lightweight LS7 engine, fully dressed, that's about 430 pounds. So an additional 100 pounds in a car that weighs 2,800 pounds, not to mention that the engine's moving more forward and above the front axles, it's definitely gonna change the characteristics of the car. Now, how does that compare to a Honda K-Swap? Well, even the lightest weight K20A3 engine from Honda still comes in at 405 pounds. Now, once you add on piping, turbo, and intercooler, you're basically at the same weight as an LS engine swap. So it's pretty much a wash. Now, another swap that you can possibly do would be a turbocharged 1J or 2JZ from Toyota. Now, there's a few problems with this, partially because of the engine layout. It's an additional two cylinders longer than a V8 or a four cylinder. And also it's a vertical inline six in contrast to like a V8 or a four cylinder that sits off at a bank. So when it comes to hood clearance, this becomes an issue. Now I'm sure there's gonna be people in the comments saying, well, you could do this, this, and this, or swap into this. Scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And I have no doubts of that. But what does that mean for rotary fanatics like myself who love that experience of driving a rotary powered car? Now, I just upgraded the turbos in my RX-7 to BNR Stage 2 turbos, which have been known to do well over 450 horsepower at the wheels. And I was planning on doing 400 at the wheels. But with this recent announcement from Mazda and the increase in price of brand new engines, 
I think I'm gonna keep the boost down lower for quite some time. Now Mazda has not come out publicly and expressed why their recommended price has increased by 93%. To those of us within the RX-7 community, we are a little bit confounded by this because of the new MX-30 that has a rotary engine as a range extender, we would think that this means that rotary production in general would be ramped up, making it easier for us to get these engines, but now it's becoming almost impossible at the price point. Maybe this assumption was wrong. Maybe Mazda actually pulled those resources, manpower, and tooling from building those REW engines and applied all that to the new small one rotor engine for the range extender. Maybe that's why it's more expensive. Now, what's really frustrating to myself and to many people within the community is that Mazda has continued to tease all of us with a future sports car that's gonna be rotary powered in some capacity. Folks have found their patent submissions online that show a rotary sports car or a rotary hybrid sports car, and even went as far as to tease us with the beautiful RX Vision in 2016. And to add insult to injury is when it comes to teasing, they even made a GT3 version of that car for racing in video games. So with each passing year and nothing coming to fruition, it seems like a rotary powered sports car replacement to the RX-7 is becoming more and more vaporware. The rotary powered cars built by Mazda are the only cars that were commercially successful to be powered by an internal combustion engine that was not a piston engine. This small little car manufacturer in Hiroshima, Japan has proven over and over again why the rotary engine is so impressive. And they even proved it to the whole world when they won Le Mans in 1991 with a rotary powered sports car being the first Japanese manufacturer to ever win Le Mans. Now with the electrification of all cars on the horizon, maybe Mazda might surprise us with one last swan song of a rotary powered sports car. But until they actually announce it, I'm gonna have my doubts. And in the meantime, I'm gonna do the best that I can to keep my rotary powered RX-7 going as long as possible. Sadly, I feel like this new price hike is effectively signing the death warrant for rotary powered sports cars. Used car engines are going to get more and more expensive if people scrounge to keep their rotary powered sports cars alive. And those who had the dream of owning a rotary powered sports car with a screaming, <laughs> brapping engine, those dreams are effectively dead. Well, at least it was a beautiful dream.